Hi everyone. Today I'm going to discuss how you deal with a young person at your clinic or when you're dealing with young person at hospital uh, as a practicing doctor in Australia. Uh, here, what I'm going to do is I will take an example of a, a case scenario which is uh, which can be used to your AMC clinical exam or for your pesky exams in GP training or you know, GP fellowship OSCE question. So we'll take that sort of approach and then we'll discuss uh, how you deal with a, a young person in that situation, taking an example. Okay, so the scenario would be like this. You will get a 14 years old girl present to you uh, with moderate facial acne and she comes with her mom and the mom leave the girl at your surgery or at your room and then she lets the girl talk to you on her own okay uh, if it is a girl we'll use the name Erin if it's a boy we use the name Eric Erin or Erin is our case they are 14 years old and they, they come into you with um, their parents, either mom or dad, but the parent leave the child with you to get the uh, history, examine the child, uh, investigations if needed. And then the question would be, how do you manage, manage the patient? So uh, the instruction or the things uh, supposed to do by the doctor would be, uh, you are supposed to take the history from the patient, and when you ask for the examination, the examiner will give you a clinical photograph of the face of the child. And uh, then you are supposed to outline the likely diagnosis and how do you manage the patient, okay? So you get a 14 years old child in front of you now. And um, when you take the history, what are the most important things to consider? One, most important thing would be to um, ensure the confidentiality with the patient, okay? So because you see the scenario, mom leaves the child with you. That means uh, mom recognized that there are confidential things need to be discussed. So therefore they leave the child with you. Uh, so you assure the confidentiality with the patient. You say, okay, Erin, um, I'm here to help you today, I'm so-and-so. And, -so. and um, uh, what, I'm, what I would like to emphasize is that uh, whatever we discuss in this room stays here uh, between you and me. It doesn't go out unless it's harmful to you or someone else, which is like if the patient is talking about suicidal ideation or something, then you'll have to take an action. But otherwise you keep everything sort of confidential. Um, that's one thing. And then building rapport, uh, you don't straight away go into the patient and ask, okay, why are you come here? Why are you here? Uh, you don't ask that sort of question, but what, you, what would, would you like to do is like building some rapport. You know, like young, pe young patients usually um, don't trust adults, okay? Uh, it's true for their parents as well as teachers and sometimes um, the doctors even. So for the young person, uh, whatever suggested by their peers, like whatever suggested by their uh, friends uh, would be more important than the doctor's suggestion or even the parent's suggestion. So therefore you have to build the rapport first thing, okay? Talk a bit of... Um, um, social things, maybe some like hobbies and things, and then you come to the uh, main sort of um, discussion. So ensuring confidentiality or making sure that it's confidential and then um, building rapport are the two things you would be doing first thing. And then if a young person come to you, you would be doing heads assessment, remember? Uh, that's another thing you would be covering here. Although the scenario is about acne, you're supposed to cover head assessment. Keep that in mind. I'll come back to you uh, about uh, how to do the head assessment. Then we'll go to the um, uh, 
presenting situation. So she's coming with uh, moderate acne, and then you ask about acne itself, how long that has been there for, uh, okay, duration of the acne, and then where is acne, like is it only on face or is it on chest or the back, and how severe is it, and then impact of acne on her social life and relationship, because, uh, you know, young, uh, 14, 15, years old, uh, they, they are, this time is the time where the people in 14, 15, 16, that age, they would be exploring things and exploring relationships and that they may be trying things adults would try, you know, like uh, behaviors. Uh, so therefore you have asked these questions. Um, ask about the uh, impact of acne on her social life, then the Erin would tell you that she's worried about that she would not be able to uh, find a boyfriend because of her appearance. So that's affecting uh, her uh, social life, relationships. And uh, whether it's it's very important to ask that question, whether acne um, is affecting that so much, she's uh, uh, actually thinking about like, you know, whether she's depressed or anxious, uh, those things. Uh, that can be covered in your head assessment. Uh, then ask about uh, whether she know about acne and what does she think about it, like whether it's, uh, she, what does she think that caused the acne, whether she's thinking about a food or medication or anything like that. In your history, you should ask whether she's on any medication because some of the medications can increase acne. Uh, and the other thing you would be asking is um, uh, the condition polycystic ovarian disease. You ask a few questions regarding that whether she has any symptoms and signs. Uh, then, because she's 14 years, you ask about her general health, her periods, and are they regular, are they heavy, uh, and things like that. Uh, after this, I would suggest you to go for the HEADS assessment. Um, ask Erin about her home situation, H. Then ask about E, is about her education, employment, uh, uh, her like the environment she lives in school. Um, then uh, uh, eating, what does she eat? Does she do exercise? Uh, e, H, E, and then A for activities. Activities uh, she does herself and with peers and relationships, like whether she ride bikes or whether she play tennis or what. What does she do? Uh, D is for drugs and even you can include it for depression. Drugs include um, like recreational drugs, cigarette smoking and alcohol. As I, as I told you before, this is the time they would be exploring things and they would be a sort of uh, trying few adult behaviors uh, like drug use, cigarette smoking and alcohol. You just ask them uh, without being judgmental. Right, and then you ask about sexuality, whether she got a relationship or whether she's active sexually. Uh, does she know about contraceptives? Um, then for S, S again, suicide, whether she got any thoughts of self-harm or suicide and about safety, whether she's taking any, um, you know, like um, uh, whether she's safe currently or whether she's taking any risks, risk-taking behaviors, right? Uh, so, so these would be the questions you would be asking during HEADS assessment. Um, these you would not ask direct, but you would know it's a conversation. So you would ask uh, Erin, how is home? Or who else is at home? Are you ha happy at home? Things like that. And then again, the, about the school would be the same. Uh, about drugs and things you would be say, you would uh, tell her that you know young people would um, try different things have you thought about trying this um, you know like recreational drugs or are you using any uh, sexuality you would always ask if it's all right with you i would like to ask some personal questions like that and then you would go for the um, further questions so always ask for the permission right and then that's history. And when you go to the examination, uh, first thing you would 
how to get the you know the patient's uh, permission you ask the Erin is that okay if I examine you and then you do the uh, you know general examination maybe vital signs blood pressure pulse uh, temperature and then you go for the um, uh, specific area like uh, acne so you ask the examiner that I want to examine her face and then uh, examiner will give you a photo then you would confirm acne and then describe signs, whether there's any comedones, pustules, are there erythematous areas, scarring, cystic changes, to say that it's the acne. Um, so that would be the examination part. Then investigations, uh, nothing much to be done, but if you say she's sexually, if she says that she's sexually active, a contraceptive use and things or not. And then you might offer a urine pregnancy test. Uh, and uh, depending on symptoms, sometimes you do other office tests. Generally, nothing much for a case like this. Uh, management include you uh, describing the uh, like um, uh, findings and you tell her that what you uh, diagnosed and then check her understanding about acne and uh, explain about acne without using a lot of uh, you know medical jargon but just in simple terms you tell her that uh, acne is uh, caused by you know like uh, blockage of the um, pilosebaceous unit on her face you don't use those words but use some simple terms and then you would say um, that's caused by a few things maybe bacteria proliferating there and uh, sometimes a keratin plug formation uh, blocking the duct uh, so just explain that to Erin your patient and then you reassure that uh, acne can be controlled and it should not stop her socializing or should not stop her finding a boyfriend, for instance, so she should be able to socialize, yeah? So you tell her that it can be controlled and we are here to help her to control her acne. Uh, so the other thing you advise, so in history, you might, when you ask history, she would say that uh, she would go to the mirror early morning and start picking and squeezing, and then mom will um, uh, sort of, um, shout saying okay Erin get ready to go to school things like that so then you would advise against picking and squeezing uh, offer treatment depending on what she has already tried in in your history you should be asking Erin have you tried anything so far anything over the counter like that's uh, pharmacy medicine uh, without prescription uh, so whether she has tried any over the counter medication uh, then advise her to do regular washing with milder soap maybe avoid ask her to avoid oily or greasy like thick um, skin preparations suggested her healthy healthy diet here you would advise okay don't um, so suggest her to sort of uh, discourage her using a lot of uh, high glycemic index food uh, that can cause uh, acne to get worse yeah um, then your treatment, depending on what she has tried so far. Uh, so treatment include topical treatment as well as oral treatment. Topical re treatment could be topical retinoid or topical antibiotic like benzyl peroxidase. Um, uh, then um, combination, benzyl peroxidase with uh, retinoid. Then you can use oral antibiotic like uh, doxycycline or minocycline tetracyclines. Uh, it's not recommended for young people, so therefore you use uh, either doxycycline or minocycline. Um, what, so like the retinoid usually reduce the excess uh, keratin, hyperkeratinization, reduce the, uh, like benzoyl peroxidase would reduce the bacteria proliferation. Um, combination would uh, keep acne under control if it doesn't work, the first thing you would be trying is this combination, benzoyl peroxidase and uh, retinoid, like benzoyl peroxidase adapalene combination, for instance. And then you'll continue that for, say, uh, six to eight weeks. 
if it doesn't work or if it's not controlling enough, then you would be adding um, uh, doxycycline short, like a course of two to three months, maybe maximum six or four, say four to six, but generally three months. Uh, if it once you get that under control with uh, doxycycline or minocycline, then you take take that back and continue uh, the baseline treatment with uh, benzoyl peroxidase and topical retinoids. Uh, here you would um, um, show the examiner that you aware that uh, the management, if it doesn't work by three, four months, you would be referring the patient to the dermatologist to do oral isotretinoin. And there is high risk of uh, teratogenicity with the oral retinoid um, tretinoin. Uh, therefore, not at the age of 14, but uh, advice against pregnancy when they own isotretinoin. But you mentioned that to the patient, like there's a risk of uh, uh, high risk of teratogenicity. Um, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do in this sort of case, head assessment, uh, ensuring confidentiality, and then building rapport. Uh, at the end, you would be giving uh, reading material, like uh, you can uh, print uh, um, patient education material regarding acne. Uh, that's always available on your software. Uh, and also, uh, you describe, uh, you, you tell, uh, you tell Erin and parents that uh, you, you encourage them to come for a review in uh, like you know, six to eight weeks first time and then three months. Uh, and then you decide whether you continue baseline treatment or whether you have to uh, refer them to the dermatologist. Reading material, review, um, would conclude your case. Um, uh, remember one more thing I would try to discuss here. Uh, always, when young people come to you, they may have some hidden agenda, right? Uh, some people may come for, say, for a STI screening, or some would come for a, that's common scenario, right? They come with something, and then if you inquire, you will find that they need a STI screening as well. Or the scenario like this, 14 years old girl coming to you uh, asking for an acne treatment, uh, on back of her mind or their parents' mind, there may be... Uh, an idea like getting an oral contraceptive pill because that's another treatment here. Uh, for acne, you can use oral contraceptive treatment, especially because she's a girl, right? So you could ask that question like, um, you know, Erin, some people who come to see me know that uh, the medication given to acne can act as a contraceptive as well. Um, is that the case with you? And if she, then you, she will say, okay, yeah, we're going to be sexually active and we need a uh, contraceptive pill as well. And then you can cover that from the same treatment for acne here, right? You just check for that hidden agenda as well. And as I said, head assessment, um, ensuring confidentiality, building rapport, and then looking for a hidden agenda and general safety of the young person. Okay, that would conclude our case discussion.